Well, hi guys, and welcome back to my SimSig tutorials, my introductions to each of these simulations. And the other day I decided to pay for Port Talbot. I'm quite fond of kind of South Wales, the excitement and variety of railway operations down there. And the first thing I noticed when I downloaded this and ran it up was it was a pretty big simulation uh, and I was a bit scared because I'm not massively familiar with services down in South Wales as I am with certain other parts of the country. So I kind of started up the timetable. The default timetable is 2015 and I went for the four o'clock start. And the nice thing is I basically worked out it's not particularly difficult to run with one person. But at the same time, it could provide a lot of kind of interest for multiplayers and it also chains to Cardiff. It chains to Hereford as well, I believe. So you can kind of do lots of cool stuff with it. But I just want to take you through kind of from left to right, because the way this is laid out kind of suits maybe the signaling panels. But it doesn't really match the geography of the land just because it's all being crushed into a you know, a kind of narrow space as possible, even though it kind of represents an area of probably, I would imagine, 40 odd miles. So Ponticlun in the east of the country is on the left hand side here, the top left of the simulation. And that's just before a Cardiff. So that's really the kind of most easterly point. The main line then kind of comes across here, Bridge End Station, carry on stormy goods loops here. And then we get to Margam Sidings here, which is a massively busy freight sidings for the Tata Steelworks that is still there and still operational. And as we carry on further west, we get to Port Talbot Parkway. The main line then goes up here towards Neath. And then after Neath, we get to Swansea. And Swansea's a terminal station, so trains that are continuing to West Wales have to reverse at Swansea, come back on the down loop and then continue down to here. Some trains stop at Gowerton, some don't. And then you get here to Hlandilo Junction and Hlanetli station here, where some trains reverse to go back down towards uh, Pantifinon. And then the, the rest of the services go here to Pembury and Burry Port, which is a continuation here of B. So that's the main line. We then have the district kind of bypass lines, which basically designed to serve the various freight and colliery traffic that once came down here. Fortunately, on the 2015 timetable, there isn't a lot using this line. There's an odd special passenger service, but Burrow Sidings sees, <coughs> sees a bit of traffic. A little bit comes to Trostra, where it still works down here. And then, like I say, trains come from Swansea to Hlanetli, reverse at Hlanetli back here onto the up lines, onto the district, round the loop here at Hendy Junction, and then up the very, very long single track line towards Hereford, which has a slot system. So that's pretty much that traffic from Burroughs sidings. Most of it goes to Margam, and then some of it comes out here down the single track here and up towards the Neath and Brecon Junction line here to uh, Onkluin uh, Washery. We then have the only other bit of any real significance on this timetable is at Bridge End. We have this loop line here, which goes towards Tondu. Those three stations are repeated on this panel up here. So you can see the service that looks like it's only just left Bridge End is already on this panel. And then when you get to Tondu, there's then the single line up to my steg up here, which kind of gets worked. It's a fairly slow kind of running up here, so it's not particularly difficult to run all of this with one person. So let's go here and look at the, the kind of special stuff to note. The only crossing, level crossing of any significance is Pencoed, and that's because it's a CCTV manually worked crossing. Now, the only difference on this is as a train approaches the last green block before the crossing, if it is raised, it will flash up here lower and to tell you to lower it. And a simulation message will come up on the panel here, which you can assign to a sound if you want, just to say, look, there's a train approaching. 
and the only time I will kind of follow that immediately is a service coming in from Ponty Cloon that is not stopping at Pencoed or in some cases not stopping at Llanharan and that is because the only trains that will get there very quickly are the trains that are already doing about 80 miles an hour which I think is the line speed at this point. If it's a freight train, I tend to wait until it's getting to that first yellow signal there before I lower it. And also, if it's stopping at Clan Haran, then don't lower it until it's left Clan Haran. And generally, if it stops here, it's going to stop at Pencoed Station, which is the western side of the crossing. And again, I tend to wait till it hits yellow before I lower it. And likewise, most of the fast trains stop at Bridge End. So I will usually bring up the timetable with, uh, sorry, the running list, train list with F2. I'll wait for the train to leave Bridge End and for it to reach 50 to 55 miles an hour before I lower that. And that's just, just to avoid any excessive waiting for the, the, the people crossing on the level crossing. Likewise with freight, wait till it hits the yellow block here. And then once it does that, I can lower it and clear it before the freight train then reaches you know comes towards the red signal at which point it will start to slow down so that's generally what i do there otherwise that's fairly straightforward it's a, it's a normal crossing which you can leave on auto or you can raise manually if you want the loop here i think this is the first time i've used a loop uh, and the only reason i've used a loop here is because that's the stopping service that was catching up so rather than letting it catch up and then get to a red and then kind of causing it to get delayed i put it via the loop which allows it to carry on slowly but to take a little bit longer generally haven't used that loop other than that haven't used this loop either because the line speed here isn't massive it's 80 for stopping for the kind of intercity 125s sorry hsds and uh, they generally all stop at bridge end so even if there's a freight service in front of that it doesn't take long for it to clear stormy and into margam out the way so generally don't need to use that loop here we have the vale of glamorgan line which is the line via barry to cardiff and they're basically passenger services only most of which go into platform 1a and then back out of platform 1a with a different code up towards cowbridge road as soon as a train arrives here it will ask for a slot you can give it the slot by left clicking the slot button but just note that occasionally the signal will still call you and tell you they want the slot and usually what i then have to do is kind of allocate the slot again and then right click it to cancel it otherwise you can't bring the train back out of there sometimes services join here so just be mindful of that and in the morning you've got a couple of services that sometimes will go towards that signal 3462 on the timetable and they will come off the main line to here and they will wait here to then reverse either into one or to two so just watch out for it. it's reversing two so that's fine then we have stormy loops again not used heavily kind of depends a little bit some of them like say this service here is actually timetabled to stop in the loop so just be mindful of that most of them if you signal it past stormy that's not a problem they'll just carry on but just be mindful in this case that's got to allow this class one train down here to go past so keep a little eye, eye on that some of the passenger trains stop at um, pool and some don't so don't really know you just got to check that and then really almost all of your freights that are coming in from ponty clune are going into margham yard and most of the freight services originating from Margham Yard go east, come out at east and go back to Ponte Clune. All departures and arrivals here require a telephone call. Make sure you pick the correct end to make the telephone call. And when you get a call from Margham, make sure that you take note of which end the train's coming out from. Both ends of the yard allow you to go into a kind of another block here rather than straight onto the main line so that kind of buys you a little bit of time but just beware that if you come out of here there is no kind of warner route or call on route into here so if you set that route from signal 3348 to 3336 you're going to get an overlap here which means you can't bring a freight service off of the main line into here 
until that comes out so just be aware of that don't be too keen to set these things set these routes for too long a distance and likewise you might have say a service here 6b09 don't kind of think oh it's going into margam let's set the route all the way straight into here because again unless you use the permissive arrow here and you set it into here you're going to get an overlap and that's going to leave a train stuck in the east until this train gets here and stops otherwise fairly straightforward kind of operation at margam especially if you've got it on easy setting things are running to time i haven't had any services using this line here towards kind of tondu and i think it's partly because in this timetable uh, the guru branch is basically closed and it's only a single line to my stag so nothing much happened in there note that the uh, these two lines here are both bi-directional and this line the down line here is also bi-directional haven't had any need to use that but i'm sure that would be useful in some of your kind of multiplayer games when you want to maybe block one of the lines or put it under possession or something so that's fine haven't had anything to port talbot docks then we get to port talbot notice that some of these signals don't have automatic working so you tend to have to reset those quite frequently and there isn't much need to use the down relief i only had need to use that because of a special which was put on the timetable and which was kind of conflicting a little bit but in general um, you shouldn't need the relief unless you start seeing significant delays for any kind of reason and there's a fair amount when you get into panel b of signals that don't have automatic buttons but have automatic settings and i don't know if that means they are just to help you running the simulation and don't exist in real life as opposed to normal auto buttons like this here but they are there so for most of the time you can leave those auto working buttons most services from port talbot go towards neath most services from neath will come across here just watch for the occasional freight that's running up the district line that you'll need to cancel these down cancelling that down doesn't cancel the auto button so once you've maybe sent one train down here you can set this back to neath and that will stay on, on auto working so that's fine Again, in Neath, uh, I don't think there are any services on this timetable that are booked for the civil engineering sidings here. But because these don't, that signal there and that signal there don't have auto buttons, you have to keep setting those all the time, which is slightly annoying. Then as we come across from Neath, there's not a lot to do here. That's all fairly plain running. Freight services on district, some of them will reverse at signal 470 into uh do never ground frame and some of them will go all the way into burrows sidings as mentioned in the notes note that you can't go from here directly to this signal i think you can only get there from here possibly but um yeah that's maybe kind of worth noting you can go from here all the way to the up sidings but you can't get to that signal 568 for some reason Burrows, normal kind of stuff. Uh, I can't remember. I think there's a telephone call that you have to make to Burrows, and I think they call you to send a train out, but nothing particularly worrisome there. Trains coming from Burrows going towards Neath, a bit like the trains you send from Bridge End up to uh, Tondu, have this kind of slot system where normally you would call Neath and say, I've got a train, but in this case, you have to click the button here to accept the slot before you can set a signal from 453 through to either that exit arrow or through to that signal there you don't need to offer the slot or request a slot before it's accepted you just accept it and that allows you to set the route likewise for stuff coming the other way you have to accept it at this end before you can set a sig set a route from here to here which is this signal 468 so that's fairly straightforward nothing much here haven't had anything into any of these into any of these uh, when we get to swansea there isn't a lot that's complicated you get a fair number of shunt moves from the emergency road into swansea which requires going from here from 553 to the limit of shunt signal and then reversing from 504 back on the down main so that's pretty straightforward some of them are booked via the carriage washer and the carriage washer doesn't take very long like if you've played King's Cross, Alexandra Palace carriage washer takes about 20 minutes. This doesn't really take any time at all. So things going into the carriage washer come down the other end quite quickly. 
and you can as you can see here set the route to 264 without blocking the junction here but just be mindful particularly in the mornings there's lots of movements into and out of sidings uh, at the same time that you've got trains coming in from the kind of london cardiff direction as well as trains coming in and out via the down loop so you'll often get services coming from west wales will come usually along this line into platform one they will then rever reverse out on the up main and then trains from Ponticloon will generally use platforms two or four. Platform two to reverse out here if they're continuing on towards West Wales. Platform four usually terminating trains, which will go back the same direction. And then platform three is kind of any leftover stuff. Nothing kind of particularly in here. Watch out for timings for trains from West Wales. They tend to have quite a generous timing allocation uh, or allowance from the down loop so sometimes they might get there a good five minutes early so be careful about setting routes through here to platform one when you might have a 1L service which is often the, the trains to London Paddington will come out of there so just keep a little eye on that but nothing particularly scary at Swansea then the triangle here there's a little bit of regulation to make one thing that's particularly important is trains to um, Pantafunon, um, Patafinon, sorry, are this line takes a long time to clear. So I think it takes at least 10 minutes, maybe slightly longer for a passenger service to get from here and to get basically all the way to Pantafinon, which is quite a long way past what you can see on here. There's another couple of blocks before the station. And then I think there might be a passing loop at I'm not even sure if there's a passing loop at this station. I think it's even further up. So if you're waiting for a service to arrive, you will block it if you send a train too early. So you've got to be very careful. Freight trains have a speed limit here, which is lower than the passenger trains. So they take even longer, take best part of 20 minutes to clear the single line. So just be careful when that special comes in the morning, 1Z37, I think it is. Be very careful about regulating that. You basically got to send it up there and you'll cause your arriving class two service to be about 30 minutes late. Most of that time it will make up because of the reverse at Clinically. So that's kind of OK. Trostra Works Junction, not very much going on there at the Steelworks. You've, you've got a couple of trains a day. You have to call them to get a train in there and they will call you to get one out. But no, nothing particularly tricky here. I've had no traffic at all around Hlenechli docks, Hlenechli docks, so nothing to worry about too much there. And then the last bit really of any interest is Hlenechli station itself, and that's because you have a lot of these triangles because you've got a couple of different kind of movements, really. If you are reversing in the down passing loop, they call it down passing loop, but basically the down platform, then use the white arrow. And that will make this a call on signal that will only light up on approach. So that means that the west end level crossing doesn't need to lower. Obviously, in this um, simulation, I don't think that matters. But in real life, you would not want to put that down if the trains are not actually going any further than there. So use the white route for that. And then from there, obviously, you can just signal them back out onto the up line, which is fine. If they are stopping, but otherwise going straight on, then you should use the normal signal 284 to signal 286. You can also set the route onwards. And then this level crossing will only trigger much later when the train, I think it's probably triggered at that signal or at the end of the platform, but that's much less time. If the train is not stopping, use the green arrow and then that level crossing will go down much sooner because the train's not going to stop, so it's got no time to wait. So that's what you do there. Likewise, on the way back, you can use that arrow if it's going to stop, or use a green arrow if it's not, and that will dictate when the east level crossing goes down. These are what they call uh, um, obstacle detection level crossings, so they just use radar and stuff to work out if the, the crossing's blocked. doesn't make any difference to you as the operator, because to all intents and purposes, purposes, they will work as automatic half barriers, for you you just have to make sure you set the correct route so i think that's it nothing too much definitely you can handle this with one person i have i think i've currently got the time set to just above normal speed and that's manageable i think you know with some time with some experience 
you could uh, crank that up a bit even more. Somebody was saying on the forum this isn't really suitable to a genuine 1980s timetable because the layout here kind of reflects post-1990 when a lot of simplification was made. But you probably could knock up a fairly decent 1980s timetable based on the new layout, which wouldn't be super accurate, but it would certainly make your multiplayer playing a lot more frantic and a lot more interesting. But like I say, otherwise you can chain this if you want. You can work, work on it with multiplayers, but to be honest, unless you're going to start injecting some failures and stuff, as it stands, the normal 2015 timetable would, timetable would be a little bit too tedious, except for complete beginners. So pretty good fun. Uh, not sure if it's definitely worth the 25 quid as a single player sim, but hopefully with some timetables and some, you know, some input from the community, I think this probably very, you know, very well would be worth that. So have fun. Any questions or comments, chuck them on the bottom. Any kind of more deep technical questions, please go on to the SimSig forums because they can answer them a lot more easily than I probably can. But otherwise, I will see you in the next video.